So Risa Tisa, the woman who did the um, Who the F Did I Marry series that went super viral, she did a video recently talking about giving dating advice, right? And one of my mutuals, I'm going to uh, include the link uh, in the uh, bio or whatever, all right, the caption. One of my mutuals did a really great video um, that I was going to stitch, but it has music playing and it keeps getting copyright violations here. So I'm going to include that link. And she made several good points. One of them is she's like, talking about how happy she is for Risa Tisa's success. The other is explaining why uh, someone like Risa Tisa is exactly who we should be listening to in terms of dating advice. And she talks about the, that not all women, you know, have to learn the hard way. Uh, some people actually listen to their grandmothers. And then other women who, like me, were a little bit of like know-it-alls and like that can never happen to me kind of thing. Um, well, uh, we usually end up eating our words. She also talks about how women will criticize someone like Risa Tisa giving advice and being like, well, who are you to give advice? Like, look what happened to you, right? Well, it, these same women will go and listen to recovered narcissists like, or, or go and, and hire male dating coaches or listen, you know, to like Derek Jackson. I used to listen to him because I was like, wow, he really gets me. Guess what? Cheater humiliated his wife uh like there's so many men that i was like wow he just tells it how it is he's so honest blah 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 usually these men are preying on us and i will get to that later but first i i have seen a lot of discourse about people being like pissed that risa tisa signed with caa which is i mean <clears throat> if you know hollywood that is like the biggest agency like the biggest stars are represented by them and you know usually well, first of all, we know that there's like misogynoir and um, all kinds of the isms built into people's uh, hating this amazing, uh, I don't even want to say opportunity, but you know, the success that Risa Tees is getting. But as someone who's been in the industry, like as a, as a starving, starving artist or whatever you want to call it, you know, and lived in New York and LA uh, and, you know, and, and still in so much debt trying to make it. First of all, this is just the industry. Some of the most talented people I know uh, disappeared because it is so hard to make it in this industry. And nepotism is so, it, like, it, it really does come down to nepotism. Very few people make it in the industry who don't have a famous daddy or mommy or, or you know, uncle or whatever. And I say this as someone I used to teach these kids these famous people's kids for a living. And I worked on set in the film industry, in the art department, and being also on the entertainment side uh, as a storyteller and a comedian, and then a writer and journalist and all this stuff. I, it really didn't, I didn't understand how much nepotism truly plays into this until all those experiences, and then I still am learning, holy crap. Wow, all, like most of my favorite stars have a famous relative. But the more important thing is that the reason why Risa Tisa went viral, it wasn't that she had a good story. We all have great stories. It wasn't that she had a crazy story with a, dating a man. I and most women I know have insane stories with men. The reason why she went so, like, knocked it out of the park viral that people were willing to listen to, I, what is it, 10 hours or whatever it was of a story is because she is good at storytelling. That's it. It wasn't her story, although it was crazy. It was she is naturally amazing at storytelling and reflective and used details and holds herself accountable, but also doesn't have like all this shame built in. The way she told the story was the way people, professionals tell stories on stage at the Moth and This American Life and all these huge things with years of experience. So she deserves to be signed by CAA. They were smart in seeing it's not that she went viral. It's that she's talented. She's naturally talented. A lot of this in the industry is luck. S some of it is talent. Most of it is nepotism and privilege. And I say this as a middle-class white woman who has so much more privilege than most people, way more talented than me. Just because I'm not trapped with the other barriers like poverty, disability, homophobia, transphobia, racism, misogynoir, or any of those other things. So Risa Tisa deserves every single good thing that comes to her and, and with her talent. And if you aren't happy for her, 
then maybe go journal about that and sit with that. Because a lot of times my own jealousy of other people came from something much deeper. But let's get, <laughs> sorry, that was a little rant, but I've been wanting to talk about that for a while. But, uh, so this is a twofer in one video. The reason why Risa Disa is qualified to give dating advice is because like, that's my mutual. Uh, by the way, I'm going to tag her, like she said, and she does a lot of content ar around stuff like this, is that those, uh, those of us who've been in the trenches, who have learned the hard way, because some people, much to my family's, <laughs> like, I, I imagine being my mother. <laughs> like, if y'all know my story and all the things, all the jobs that I've done, all the crazy, crazy things I've done, uh, I, I think I am the reason why, one of the reasons why I don't want kids. I would never be able to to, to handle <laughs> someone like me if I was the mother. But a lot of us have to learn through pain because we think we're know-it-alls or because a lot of times it's because we have all this uh, uh, trauma that we haven't dealt with and instead of, or we don't even know we have to deal with it until we get into a relationship and we're like, oh, wow, this feels really familiar. This feels like home in a very bad way. Or some of us are know-it-alls and we think we're the exception to the rule. We think that, oh, you know, like all these other women, da, da, but not me. I used to be this woman. When is it you just leave? How stupid do you have to be to get in an abusive relationship? Oops. Same people who fall into cults say the same thing. Seriously. The people who are like, that could never happen to me. You are the most likely for it to happen to because you're, you, you think you know it all. Like, I know that I am still susceptible to things and therefore that makes me more vigilant. But if uh, being too cocky is like not a good thing. So some people listened to their grandmothers who were mostly hostages, who no matter how bad it was, how much these men beat them and raped them and cheated on them and financially abused them, no matter what those men did to the, our grandmas, they couldn't leave. I've told y'all before, my own grandma was literally a hostage. <laughs> she wanted a divorce and uh, he wouldn't give it to her. So shocker, she died of cancer long before he did. And he celebrated at her funeral. Literally yelled, I'm king of the mountain now! In the middle of the funeral parlor thing. And whispered to my dad, free at last, free at last. Like a man who would not give her a divorce. So some people listen to their grandmas. My grandmas never told me any of this stuff. I found out all of this stuff after my, that grandma was dead. And I still find out more every day. And I'm like, ah! no wonder she was so mean. <laughs> Some people listen, if it's not their grandmas, they'll listen to other women who've been through this. That's why I make this content. I want through my own stories and the stories of other women, I want to share things to be aware of. Things to look out for so you don't get tricked as easily. So that you don't find yourself literally trapped in a relationship before you realize, oh, this is a uh, financial abuse. I'm stuck. So that if you're not sure that you have covered all your bases, you at least get your paperwork in order so that uh, you at least have money and a backup plan in case you missed some red flags, right? Some of us have to learn the hard way. I'm one of them, right? I don't know. They call it growing pains for a reason, I guess. Pain is the only thing that ever seems to ever motivate me to grow. So it's actually kind of one of the things I live by though. Whenever I'm going through something like really hard, the only thing that helps me get through it is knowing, okay, my job here is to take the lesson. What is the lesson? This sucks, but like, what am I going to get? Surely I'm going to take something from this and this will help me grow in a whole new way. And I'm telling you, with that approach, instead of being like really stuck in like self-pity, which I can go into pretty easily, what's the lesson? What's the lesson? What do I need to do? What do I need to take from this so that it never happens again? What can I learn? How can I grow? Because I mean, call that like silver lining or like it, this isn't like denying uh, pain uh, because I did that for a long time too. Like I let myself experience pain and anger and sadness and all those things instead of just, well, oh, it's fine, nah, right? Um, but what gets me through hard things is believing that th that on the other end of this, there is some level of, of, of freedom or something that will direct me in a, in, in a, a new direction because this, this one sucks, right? And I'm also referring to things that I have control over. There's always things that happen to people that have, n they have no control over. So lots of nuance to this conversation. But like I said in a video the other day, do you know how many men, this is please don't listen to men at all 
about dating advice because most of those men are exploiting your trauma, literally making money off of your trauma, exploiting your hope. Oh, look, there's a good one. I've been hurt by every man in my life, but this guy gets it. And they end up getting financially abused by these men they don't even know who have massive platforms who are literally stealing our content, women, real victims, and regurgitating and making a fortune. So you can listen to men for dating advice, but those men are exploiting you. On some level, they're exploiting you. They're either giving you insider knowledge about what they themselves have done and feel no remorse for, but are like, oh, I know, I can make money off of being a prick to all the women before. And they're probably still doing it. We find it out all the time. Uh, I, I, there's like two men, two or three men, I don't even know. I used to follow a lot of men on TikTok. Now it's down to like, I don't know, like three or four I can think of off the top of my head and I still side eye them because every single man, except for these few, who is like, oh, I'm a feminist and I'm here to help men, but they're catering to women or they're a dating coach, you know, I can help you avoid that. Blah, blah, blah. No, all of them have been outed either publicly or through whisper networks of my mutuals who are like, yeah, this dude um, is, is like, is stalking me. Or one of my mutuals, her friend, who was so progressive, um, got her to raise $15,000 for him for a surgery using her platform and the empathy and sympathy of all the women who follow her. And then he ended up being a predator to her. Like every, do not, do not trust men online to make your life better. Okay? Like just, just listen to women. That's our internalized man. Oh, I bet this man knows something. I, this literally happened to me the other day. No, three days ago, a man had a video about how men are not responsible for their own lives because they put it on women. He literally said all the things that me and my mutual say all the time. And I was like, but he said it so well. I was like, oh, look at you. Yeah. And I was about to stitch that man's video. I am so glad I did it. Silly Melanie. Silly Melanie. Because uh, all I, I reposted it. And some of my mutuals were like, hey, that guy's a grifter. He literally it lied about being married, lied about being a therapist. And he keeps creating new accounts where he's a goddess coach. Uh, what is it? Like a, a dating coach, a life coach, like all these coaches to help women. Do not trust men who are trying to help women online. Do not trust them, right? I don't care if they're a recovered narcissist or a recovered abuser or, you know, just trying to help women understand how men think. They're all exploiting you. They're all exploiting you on some level. I promise. And yet, people will come online, like my mutual said, and they will be like, why should I take dating advice from Risa Tisa? The woman who learned firsthand experience from dating a man who lied and was, you know a gold digger and all those things. And I know other stuff has come out about him being schizophrenic. I can't even keep up, keep up with the story at this point. I'm basing this on what I know right now. But she got screwed. She told an amazing long story that captivated people's attention in a world where people won't even watch my videos for more than one minute and 22 seconds before they're like, stop rambling. Okay. Bye. Like, you don't have to follow me. But this woman captured the attention of... Why, like 50 million people or something in her first of those videos? And most people watched it. And then they watched it on on uh, YouTube and other, like, they, I can't, I don't even know if you can count how many people watched her story because she's an amazing storyteller. And then people are like, why should I take dating advice from you? Even though you learned all these lessons, you admitted your own faults and held yourself accountable. You took the lesson and learned, and now you're trying to move forward with that information and helping other women by sharing this traumatizing stuff. Why should I listen to you? I'd rather listen to a recovered narcissist man who must surely know more about how, what men are capable of than any of the people on the receiving end of all that violence. And they, it reminds me of people who are like, want to listen to white people talk about racism instead of black people. Right? Like, who do you think understands racism more? The people on the receiving end of that violence or the people on the giving end of that violence, right? So don't listen to men about anything regarding women unless they're like a trans man or a trans woman or just somebody who has a different angle than cishet men. Why would I listen to a lion about how to escape a lion when I can listen to all of the animals who have escaped that lion and how they learned to avoid that lion and how they've 
literally mourned and picked up the pieces of lost. <laughs> like, I don't care about this metaphor anymore. Do you get what I'm saying? I believe for me the healthiest way to live is to always be a teacher and a student, right? I don't always want to be a student because then that comes from the place of me just taking and taking and taking and also thinking that I have nothing to offer. I always have something I can offer someone else because of my own experiences and insight and maybe wisdom through usually bad experiences that I may be able to offer, right? Like I, 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 there's things that I can teach some people, but I still have so much to learn. So I'm always a student, always a student. And, and yet I always, it is my moral imperative to share, uh, wh what I have, uh, and, and be a teacher as well. That, that's how I live. I'm not saying everybody, you know, operates that way, but for me, it's a good middle ground, right? So I'm sorry, but survivors of DV and narcissists and all that stuff, you can learn a lot from them. You can also learn a lot from people who did not experience that and who have healthy example like the women in my life who were just so bold and direct and honest and had higher standards i learned from them too you can learn from all these experiences but to discount a woman who is a survivor as like well, why would i take advice from you the fact that you don't think you need to take advice from survivors uh, of dv and narcissists and all that stuff that makes me worried about you that makes me think that you're the same person who's like i could never fall for a cult and then two months later you're like on the alt-right pipeline through yoga or, you know, one of these things. Everything seems to send people to the alt-right pipeline on some level. Storytelling, and this is why I do it, is one of the most powerful tools. And we've been doing it for a long, long time of sharing our experiences, sharing hope, sharing cautionary tales, sharing knowledge, connecting, making people feel less alone, passing on all kinds of things that we can benefit from. And Risa Tisa is not only a survivor of a terrible experience who's willing to share her experience with us, she's also an amazing storyteller that kept all of us captivated long enough to do so. And I can't wait to see what's next.